Dr. David Omi here, neurosurgeon and spine surgeon. Today I'm going to be talking about the different locations where a disc herniation can occur. Now to understand this, the topic of this video, it's important to understand what the spine consists of. Now for simplicity's sake, we can think of the spine consisting of three parts. You've got your cervical spine or your neck, your thoracic spine, which is the part of the spine where the ribs connect to around your chest, and then your lower part of your back or your lumbar spine. Now disc prolapses can occur in any part of the spine. If I take this model of a lumbar spine, we can see that the spine actually consists of multiple bones or vertebral bodies stacked up on top of each other. Now intervertebral discs are the cartilage, pieces of cartilage between the intervertebral bodies that provide the spine with flexibility. Now a disc prolapse can occur at any level in the spine where there's a disc, but certainly there are regions of the body where it's more prone to occur. Now the most common areas where a disc herniation occurs are the areas that carry either a lot of weight or that are very mobile. So the commonest places that patients get disc prolapses are actually the lower lumbar region at the L5-S1 disc or the L4-5 disc. Certainly though we do see them higher up in the lumbar spine. The reason these discs are most affected is because they carry the weight of the full spine so they carry a lot more stress. The other areas where disc prolapses occur commonly are within the mid cervical or within the neck region. Now the reason for this is because of how mobile the neck is. Every time you turn your head, the cervical spinal neck bends and twists, and this causes stress on the mid cervical discs. So these discs are also prone to herniate. Now conversely, if we look at the thoracic spine, the thoracic spine has very minimal movement. It can't move because it has the ribs connected to it or the chest wall, so it's very restricted. As a result of this, disc herniations within the thoracic spine are very uncommon. They do occur, but not as commonly as what we see them in the rest of the spine. For more information about disc herniation, check out the other videos on this channel. I've got videos about disc herniation in the lumbar spine, disc herniation in the cervical spine, or even for more detailed information, check out my website, www.doneurosurgery.com.